We've got a new drone. It's the Mavic Air 2. And on today's episode, I will be breaking down, break it down, the Mavic Air 2, my thoughts on it so far, what you're missing out on with this drone, what you're gaining picking up the Mavic Air 2, and whether or not it's the right drone for you. So if you're new to the channel, expect brutally honest tech reviews on Dan's Tube. Make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell so you're notified on my new video content. But in today's video, we are reviewing the Mavic Air 2. It's a pretty drone. It looks like all the other Mavic range right now. Lots of sensors on it. A really nice juicy camera on the front here. This is a half inch sensor capable of shooting 4K 60. It's a 48 megapixel half inch sensor, but that's not really accurate. It's 12 megapixels and it takes multiple stills, but the 48 megapixel stills are beautiful. It's a really, really nice camera on this drone here. It flies like you would expect it to. It just kind of controls the sky like a lot of the DJI drones on the market and it's a really powerful unit with a lot to offer. The most limiting aspect of the original Mavic Air was the fact that it was using a Wi-Fi transmission where the Mavic Air 2 uses OcuSync 2.0. So you get the most reliable transmission and range you could imagine on a drone. And that's something that is a major upgrade for this drone. Uh, something that has been extremely reliable for me. I haven't had any issues so far with the range, the controller, the new system. It all works really well. You can get up to 10 kilometers of range from this drone, which is really impressive. Do not push it that far. It's illegal pretty much in every country, if not in every country. So be careful how you're going to fly the drone, but up to 10 kilometers of range is ridiculous. That's topping the Mavic 2 Pro, which had eight kilometers of range. Um, it also has a 1080p video transmission to your phone. So previously it was 720p. So that extra bump just means that you can really frame the shot and set it up in a way that it's going to be more realistic prior to editing the footage. So you get a more clear representation of what the video is going to look like over a 720p image. This was the same in the Mavic 2 Pro. You had that uh, 1080p video transmission, but we have that additional two kilometers of range and still the 1080p transmission to a unique controller that doesn't even have to pop up any antennas. Like that's not at all a thing anymore. It's just kind of designed into the controller, which is really unique. And then you just have the little thumbsticks down the bottom here. You just take them out, screw them in, ready to go, and USB-C to charge the controller. So really cool and a nice evolution from previous drones. The Mavic Air 2 also uses a new app. So instead of the Go4 app, it uses the DJI Fly app. So it's a really clean app, easy to navigate, lots of intuitive kind of features in there, but you can't live stream from the Mavic Air 2, which someone actually commented on my video recently asking about that. Um, for some reason, there's just no live streaming capabilities. The main thing is that you can't actually track subjects at 4K 60 or even 4K 50, if you're in Australia in the PAL settings. They've just capped it out. So you have to go at 30 frames. That's the max you can track someone at, 4K 30. So yes, you can shoot 4K 60, but you can't track someone and you're limited in some of the intelligent flight modes as well. So that's a little bit of a bummer. You can always just shoot 4K 60 or 50 and try to kind of follow the subject. But if you want to use the tracking or if you want to use the intelligent flight modes, you are limited to 4K 30, which is a little bit annoying. So the first big change is the controller. It looks completely different to any of the other controllers that DJI have released. I really love what they've done here. It's got this unique clamp system on top that actually allows you to have your phone still in its case. Yes, for people that have owned previous drones, you always have to take the phone out of the case. You always have to cram it into the bottom system and it's just a bit of a screw around all the time. Where this is the easiest process I think I've ever had. And at first I wasn't the biggest fan of the design. Uh, in some of the ads it just didn't do it justice. But in person, it's a really nice build quality. It's really sturdy and that clamp system on top feels great. I do not have any issues with it. It holds my phone perfectly in there. And then the little cable just kind of tucks in behind like that. You can pull that around, you can tuck the cable behind your phone, and it's such a lovely system. I really do like it. Honestly, like compared to all the other drones I've tested, this is the easiest one to set up and get ready to go. So I love that so much. You can see that the cable just tucks behind my phone here. I can still have my case on, and it just fits nicely. And then it's really easy to just kind of pop it out like that, disconnect the cable, and then that's it. Really simple setup. 
and that's probably one of my favorite things about the overall upgrade. I know it's a controller, it's not the drone, but it's just such an easy thing to set up and it takes a lot of time out of that kind of setting up process, which is amazing. This video has been sponsored by TechScore. If you're thinking about picking up the Mavic Air 2, then this could be a really good place to pick up this drone and other tech in the future. It's kind of a tech community where you can make informed decisions on the best tech available, the best prices. You can join other tech enthusiasts and talk to them about what tech they're gonna pick up and what they recommend. You can also earn points from the purchases you make and then redeem those points for cashback rewards on different gift cards and prizes on the website. So it's a really fun way to buy your tech and also to connect with other tech enthusiasts on the internet. So it's a great way to make your tech purchases. If you do wanna pick up the Mavic Air 2, then I'll have some links in the description below to check it out on Amazon, the DJI website, and also tech score as well. So three different ways to pick up your Mavic Air 2 and all of those links will be below. When it comes to the Mavic Air 2 itself, it's a really solid drone and I was expecting that. A lot of people were expecting that. It's no surprise that this thing is amazing. It has a really solid battery on it, 34 minute max flight time, probably you get about 28 minutes I would say, which is still amazing, close to 30 minutes per battery. That's a solid effort and for a lot of people that's kind of all you would need. Um, but getting the Fly More bundle gives you the three batteries. So up to an hour and a half of flight time is remarkable. I am impressed with what this camera can produce and overall I'm just impressed with what's kind of happening in the drone space. It is incremental upgrades, it's not the most mind-blowing thing in the world, but it still blows me away to this day when I can fly a drone of this size, something that's really tiny, even when it is folded out, it's still quite a tiny drone and it can capture 4K60 for me, 8K hyperlapses and some 48 megapixel stills, which again are the 12 megapixel stills, but it takes multiple of the 12 megapixel stills and kind of stitches them immediately and creates the most kind of dynamic photo that you can get from the Mavic Air 2. I am impressed with that feature though. It does actually do a really nice job. The, the obstacle avoidance is very good on this drone. It's uh, really smart and definitely upgraded from the previous obstacle avoidance. So that's really clean, really nice, easy to use. This is kind of their like main promo page, if you can see that. So they're pushing the focus track, the HDR photos, which is great, video and panorama. Uh, you got the 10K range, 48 megapixel photos, 4K 60 frames per second. The 34 minute flight time is remarkable as well. Really impressed with the flight time that I'm getting from it. 28 minutes on average is quite impressive. The 8K hyperlapse, awesome as well. So it's quite a comprehensive drone. They've just kind of dialed it back on a few things. It doesn't have everything that the Mavic 2 Pro has, but it has close to everything that the Mavic 2 Pro has. It's honestly probably the best upgrade for most people um, underneath, you know, if you've got the Mavic 2 Pro, this is probably a bit of a downgrade to be honest with you guys. But if you have the original Mavic Air, if you have a Mavic Pro, if you have a Spark or a Mavic Mini, this is a really solid upgrade. What are you gonna be using this drone for? Do you need 8K hyperlapses? Do you need 4K60? Really ask yourself if it's just a numbers game, whether you actually need 4K60 or whether it's just the fact that people tell you that you need 4K60. You know, you could get away with the original Mavic Air. You could get away with the original Mavic Pro. They're both great drones that shoot 4K and you have lots of different features and options inbuilt into those drones. So maybe the Mavic Air 2 is just a little too expensive for you or a little too overkill for your needs. Also, if you have a Mavic 2 Pro or a Phantom, you probably don't need this unless you want that form factor. If you have a Phantom and you might want a foldable form factor. But besides that, I think it's just in that nice midpoint where it is the perfect upgrade for a lot of people who have a Spark or a Mavic Mini or you know the original Mavic Air or the original Mavic Pro. For people in that kind of market, I think this is probably the perfect upgrade. The Mavic 2 Pro is probably a bit overkill for most people and it's kind of bordering on a prosumer drone, but this is that perfect high-end consumer drone. 4K60 is remarkable, um, a half-inch sensor, 
that can also do 8K hyperlapses and 48 megapixel stills. It's going to be overkill for a lot of people. It's a powerful drone and it really is a great upgrade. But just think about your needs and what you're actually going to be using the drone for. And then I think you will have the answers at that point, whether this is the right drone for you or whether you can get something a little cheaper. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to have a fantastic day and peace out.